Hello, my name is Kelly Haxt, Technical Support Manager for SoftTouch Solutions Incorporated. Today, we're going to be working with some basic markup formulas. The markup formulas may appear overwhelming upon first glance. However, the formula-based markups allow for a great deal of flexibility when it comes to pricing and frame ready. Your formula can be as basic or as complex as you need it to be. Let's take a look at some very basic formulas so you can better understand how your pricing is set up. The most basic formula we can enter is a retail price per foot. Simply type the desired price per foot into the formula field. As you can see, as the wholesale cost increases, the retail price per foot stays the same. This works well with items you may be entering manually or overstock that you're discounting. However, it's not recommended for pricing all molding items. Let's change our formula to a chop times 3.5. This formula takes the chop price and uses a 3.5 time markup to generate the retail price per foot. As the wholesale cost increases, and so does the retail price per foot. With this formula, we can change the order type, and you'll notice that the retail price per foot stays the same. This is because we've instructed FrameReady to mark up the chop price with a three and a half time markup, regardless of the order type. You'll even notice that the markup changes as we change the order type to maintain the CHOP times 3.5 retail price. So even though we're ordering by join, we're still telling FrameReady to price by CHOP times 3.5. The problem with this formula is that not all vendors provide a CHOP price. If we use a basic CHOP times 3.5 formula on an item without a CHOP price, then the result is a retail price per foot of zero. To compensate for this, we need to look at a slightly more complex formula. To better understand this formula, think of the word case as the word if. This example reads, if the chop price is greater than zero, use a chop times 3.5. If the chop price is empty, it looks at the next line. If join is greater than zero, use join times 2.5. If the join price were also zero, it would go to the last line and mark up the cost price four times. With this formula, any item with either a cost, chop, or a join price will receive a markup. This example can be rearranged depending on how you want to prioritize which wholesale cost gets used. If you want the formula to look at the cost, and then the chop, and then the join, simply rearrange the formula You'll also see that the markup changes as you change the order type and the retail price stays the same. This is because FrameReady looks at the first line of our formula that is true, which is cost is greater than zero. So regardless of how you order this molding, it will always price by cost times four. In some cases, you may wish to use the order type to determine which cost field is marked up. The problem is, is you set everything up to order by chop, and not all items have a chop price. FrameReady will not know how to mark up those items. We could go in and set all the items to the proper cost types based on what prices are provided, but it's much easier to rewrite the formula and have FrameReady do the work for us. Let's take a look at an example. This formula starts off with simply setting the length markup to 4, chop to 3.5, and join to 2.5. The reason we call this a smart formula is the complex section of formula at the end. Let's take a closer look at what's happening. If the user selects the length price, FrameReady checks if the cost field is greater than 0. If it is, the length price is used, which is cost times the 4 time markup. If cost is 0, it checks if the chop field is greater than zero and uses the chop price, which is chop times 3.5. Finally, if chop is also zero, it checks that the join is greater than zero and uses the join price, 
which is the join times 2.5. The same check is made if the user selects the chop price or the join price. That way, no matter what cost type the user selects, even if that item does not have a price for the related cost type, FrameReady will still mark up the item. The only exception would be as all the wholesale cost fields are blank, but if that is the case, FrameReady will alert you to this when you first open the program. You'll notice that as we change the order type, the markup and the retail price per foot changes. Another advantage to this formula is that it's very easy to adjust and modify markups. Ignore the second part, as once you've typed this in initially, you'll probably never need to modify this second section. Just take a look at the first few lines. Let's say we want to lower our chop markup to 3 and join to only a 2 time markup. Simply change the chop times 3.5 to a 3 and change the join times 2.5 to a 2. The set price is simply a dollar amount added onto the total price of the frame, regardless of the size. The set price is commonly used for a minimum frame price, shipping, fuel surcharges, or join surcharges. As we can see in this example, FrameReady is first checking to see if this item is a fillet. If that is true, it will use a $7.50 set price. If the item is not a fillet, it will use a $5 set price. If you wish to use the same set price, regardless of the group, you can simplify this by simply typing in the desired set price. Our set price is now simply $10. When you're satisfied with your price formula, you may want to add it as a new default formula and apply the formula to all the applicable molding items. For an overview of this process, please take a look at the molding pricing video for working with defaults. This concludes this clip. On behalf of myself and the rest of the staff at Soft Touch Solutions, thanks for watching.